What is up boys and girls, it's Seb here with Modify Up. In today's episode, we're gonna mount up the 2AZ in Project Wonder, and I'm gonna show you guys what you need to go through when creating your own custom engine mounts. Now, you don't need an engineering degree, but you do need access to a welder. So if you haven't welded anything before, make sure you practice first before you go ahead and try this one out. Let's check it out. So if you've ever thought of doing an engine conversion, one of the most confusing parts can be how to actually get the thing sitting in the bay correctly. If you're staying within your manufacturer and vintage, a lot of the time you can swap and change mounts out to get the right combination. But the second you swap a motor into a chassis from another manufacturer, all that goes out the window and you're left with aftermarket solutions from companies that make parts for that specific conversion or complete custom fabrication. Given that only a handful of people have tried to swap a 2AZ into an AE86, aftermarket support is, let's say, non-existent, which leaves us with going full custom. So with each swap having different requirements, there are a few things you should decide on before making the mounts. Going dry sump will significantly lower the height of the engine. Also, a custom trans tunnel will let you mount the engine and trans much further back closer to the center of the car. These are big decisions, so plan ahead. Once you have the motor sitting in, answer these questions. One, how far back can you get the motor? Two, how low can you get the motor? Three, how much clearance do you have? All these questions require you to be able to freely move the motor and trans around until you hit that G spot. Grab as many jacks as you can and an engine brace to hold it up because it's actually really hard to get a good view of the sump when there's an engine crane running underneath the car. So first things first, let's get the engine and trans sitting in the bay. Take your time here and pay attention on how this goes in and get comfortable as you're probably gonna have to pull this in and out several times. Watch the angle of the gearbox going in as usually the hardest part is getting the back of the engine over the steering rack. In my case, the trans tunnel needed a little bit of persuasion and the top of the box needed a little bit of shaving. And it fits pretty good. As you saw, we had to beat the, the firewall a couple of times. Um, but yeah, there seems to be enough space for everything. The only thing is we will have to cut the firewall down there so that we can fit the starter motor in. Um, I expected that we had to do that, but overall it, it fits quite nicely. Once it's in the bay, you can breathe your first sigh of relief because no doubt you've spent a lot of money just to get to this point. Now's a good time to take pictures for the gram, just to give people a false sense of how fast your build is making progress. Now it's in we can take a look at the shifter placement. You can see just how much floor was cut out by the previous owner. To be honest, my OCD is gonna make me find a rusted out shell and cut this section just so I can return it back to factory. 
So with the shifter sitting a little further back than we'd like, let's go ahead and strap this up so we can move the car around and also move the engine and trans around just until we find the right mounting position. Now is a great time to take some measurements before you go any further. Things like inlet manifold clearance, bonnet clearance, radiator clearance, sway bar clearance, etc, etc, the list goes on. These are all things that can't really be answered accurately until you have the donk sitting in there. Make sure you take your center line measurement and try and line up the center of the motor with the center line of the car. And you want to mount the engine as far back and as low as possible. Now, obviously we would all love to have our engines JGTC style with the motor pretty much sitting next to you, but a lot of the time that just isn't possible without major mods to the firewall. So, as a rule of thumb, for a four cylinder, you want to aim for your strut towers to be in line with number two spark plug. Meaning that if you draw a line in between the two strut towers, it should intersect with cylinder number two. This will keep your center of gravity closer to the center of the car. Having more weight over the front of the axle will negatively impact the balance of the car. Now in my case, the front axle line is between number two and three cylinder. So close, but not as far back as I'd like. This is due to the physical size of the bell housing. So underneath the car, we've got plenty of clearance for the subframe. And as you can see, the tunnel is actually big enough to fit the whole transmission in. The shifter comes out probably 15 centimeters back from the original position, but that's okay because we're gonna use the remote shifter and move that forward. The plate that I made for the gearbox is slightly big here, so I'll have to trim that down there and I will trim it down at the bottom here just so that it's a little bit easier to get in and out of the car. Other than that, all that we need to do now is cut the firewall so that we can fit the starter motor and then we can fab up the mounts. Once you've lined up the motor and trans in their final position, it's time to start making the mounting brackets. I'm using 6mm mild steel here, but pick the right material that suits your job. First off, start out with two squares. These will sit on the rubber mounts. Then you can start measuring out the plates that will attach to the engine. So for the 2AZ on the driver's side, we're picking up the three holes and alignment dowels that originally held the drive shaft bracket. On the passenger side, there are two untapped holes halfway up the block and one hole on the upper sump skirt. Once we've tapped these with the M12 by 1.25 tap, all we need is some spaces to create a flat plane where we can bolt up a large plate for our passenger side engine mount.
Once you've cut out those plates for the engine, it's time to measure out the bolt holes and drill them out for the rubber mount side and the engine side plates. I'm using the drill press, but you can easily do this by hand. Now that we have both the mount plates and engine plates cut and drilled, we can bolt them in place so we can take a template of the center part of the mounts. Put your arts and craft hats on and grab some cardboard. Use the cardboard in the middle of the two plates and trace the templates so that you can cut it out and then trace it onto the steel. This is the most low jack way of making the mounts, but it's very effective. Never underestimate CAD. Repeat this on the other side and once you've cut out all your pieces, you're ready to tack them into place. After you've tacked them, go ahead and stack them dimes or lay some slag. It's entirely up to you and your welder at this point. I'm using the Renegade 200 amp AC-DC inverter TIG with 2.4mm filler and 2.4mm purple tungsten. Here, you can see the raw unfinished product. I've knocked down all the sharp edges and given each corner a radius to keep things looking pretty. Now we can bolt these up and start on the trans mount. So now I'm happy with how the engine's sitting. We're gonna move over to the transmission. Try and get this made up. We're gonna run an angle bracket here, an angle bracket there, we'll run a pipe in between, and then we'll run a bush smack bang in the middle of the trans there. 
For the transmission mount, we're using 50 by 50 by 8 mil mild steel angle iron, 34 millimeter OD pipe with three millimeter wall, 48 millimeter OD pipe and three millimeter wall, and again, six millimeter plate. Start out by drilling the mounting holes on the body side so we can start mocking up the rest of the mount. At this point, I've left these really long on purpose as I wasn't sure if I wanted to run the poly mount in front or behind the bar. For the transmission side of the mount, I'm using a lower control arm bush, which will fit in the 48mm OD pipe. I then took the standard GT86 trans mount and separated the top plate from the rubber mount. I'm going to weld the tube to the original top half of the GT86 mount. Here is the pipe measured up and notched to fit the plate on the angle. And here you can see I've already tacked the transmission side together, ready for the bar to be tacked onto the angle pieces. Let's go ahead and weld all of these up. This is Eclectic Projections. So now that the two main sections are all welded up, it's time to press the bushing into the trans side of the mount. I went ahead here and painted the mount in wrinkle black before the bush went in, just so that I didn't have to mask anything up when I came to paint it again later. Set the mount up square in the press, and don't forget to lube up the outer edge to aid the bush going in initially. If you don't have a press, you can do this in a vise. Short of that, you can rig up a long bolt with some big washers to pull the bush into the mount. Lube up the inside of the bush and press the crush tube in. Now that we have both sides ready to go, we can measure up the plates that will connect the two main parts of the trans mount. I'm using a hole saw to notch the plates so we have a perfectly rounded edge to weld to the bar. Once the holes are drilled, you can cut off the end of the bar leaving a perfect semicircle to weld with. Measure your distance from the mount to the bar and drill out the mounting holes. You can then run a bolt through the mount holes to hold it in place while you tack the plates onto the bar. Once it's tacked, go ahead and stack some more dimes. I'm using another crush tube here to keep the plates aligned while I'm welding. Hopefully when you're done, they should look a little something like this. Make sure you radius your corners and knock down any sharp edges. I finished the mounts off here in wrinkled black, but you can choose to show them off in any color you like. Hot pink anyone?
So now the moment of truth. I know a lot of you think that this motor is pretty tall to fit underneath the bonnet, but let's just check it out. If I drop it. Underneath. Ooh, look at that. I can fit my whole hand. Oh, I can fit my whole hand in between the motor and the, and the bonnet. That is it guys. I hope you enjoy that episode and it helps you with making your own custom engine mounts. The main thing here is to get in there and give it a go. You might not end up with something perfect the first try, but keep practicing and you'll get there in the end. But make sure your mounts are strong and safe because they need to meet local engineering requirements. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up or even consider subscribing so I can keep making videos for you guys to watch. In next week's episode, I'm going to try a little something different while we're all stuck in lockdown, so make sure you tune in for that. That's it guys, bye!